National Educator. student welcome to our biology form 1 lesson today so our topic of discussion is cell physiology and today we are discussing active transport so uh, there are a few objectives that I want us to achieve in the course of the lesson that by the end of the lesson you should be able to one define the term active transport number two explain the factors that affect uh, active transport and number three explain the role of active transport in living organisms so those are some of the objectives that i want us to achieve in the course of this uh, lesson now uh, active transport is a physiological process that allows substances to move across a semipermeable membrane. So there are three physiological processes. One, we have division, we have osmosis, and then we have active transport. So this is a physiological process that allows substances to move across a semipermeable Membrane, but then this physiological process allows substances to move from a region of lower concentration to a region of a higher concentration uh, against a concentration gradient. So, in active transport, as uh, substances move from a region of a lower concentration to a region of a higher concentration against a concentration gradient. And the fact that these uh, molecules or these substances move against a concentration gradient, then it may, be, uh, it may not be very easy for these substances to move. So they need to be assisted uh, to move across a semi-permeable membrane. And that is why uh, we have energy. So these substances are forced across the semi-permeable uh, membrane uh, by uh, some energy. So we have an energy-rich molecule uh, known as ATP, uh, which produces energy, uh, which uh, forces or pushes uh, these substances against a concentration a gradient. It is also believed that we have some uh, carriers. Carriers are substances that combine with uh, the, uh, the, the molecules that are moving across a semi-permeable membrane and then moves them or transports them across the semi-permeable membrane. So just like we have uh, matatus, for example, on the road that will take us from or transport us from one place to another, uh, so are uh, the carriers that are used uh, during active transport. So the, uh, the carriers combine with substances, then they move them across the, uh, the cell membrane or they transport them across the cell membrane and then uh, they, get, they move across uh, for other substances. So that is the work of uh, the carrier. So in active transport, since uh, the molecules or since uh, substances move uh, against the concentration gradient, then they must be pushed across the cell. Uh, membrane. So we have some substances such as amino acids, we have substances such as uh, sugar, uh, we have most of the ions uh, which are taken up by living organisms uh, by active uh, transport. So they are taken up in the cells of many living organisms by active 
transport. So, unlike osmosis and division, active transport is therefore a very, it is not a passive process. Uh, osmosis and division are passive processes, but active transport is an active process just like the word is, uh, simply because uh, energy is uh, required or this expenditure of energy uh, which uh, which or uh, which uh, uh, pushes uh, these substances across the semi-permeable uh, membrane. That is why it is an active process. It is not a passive uh, process.